Today, I'm going to show you how to do motion tracking in After Effects. I will show you three different types of motion tracking that you can do in After Effects. And just a heads up, if you haven't used After Effects before or this is pretty new to you, I'm gonna take it slow and easy so that you will understand from start to finish. So let's jump in. All right, so when you open After Effects, this is the window that you're gonna see and we need to get some footage in. So we click on our finder. So all you have to do in order to get your footage in is you click and drag it into this left-hand section and you let go. That's gonna put your footage into After fix but we don't see anything yet so we have to click on our footage and drag it onto this little button over here that basically creates a new composition with your footage and boom there we go now we can see our footage so let's check out the first type of motion tracking this is single point motion tracking so in order to do this it's pretty simple you just select your video layer over here and you come down to your tracker tab on the right if you don't see your tracker tab make sure you go to the top click on window and make sure that tracker is selected and then it'll pop up so you select your video and click track motion. What that's gonna do, it's gonna create a little track point. If you hold command and plus, you can zoom in. Now what we get is two boxes and a little point right in the middle. So that little point is the point that is gonna be tracked. If we click on these boxes, you can see some points that we can drag out. So we can drag both of these boxes to different sizes. Basically the outer box is the area that the AI is gonna scan over. It's gonna look in order to track. And the inside box is very important because you wanna make sure that your tracking point fits inside of that box. So the best way to do this is by making sure that you pick a point that is very high in contrast. So if I hold the space bar and click and pull this footage up and drag my box to this point, that is not a good point to be tracking because there is not many points there. Just it's very, very gray. It just all looks like one point. The AI is gonna struggle really, really hard in order to find a very precise point to track. You wanna give it a high level of contrast. So I think something like this on the right with one of these windows, one of the darker windows surrounded by a lighter border is gonna be perfect. So I'm gonna drag this box all the way across and as you drag it you'll see that there's a zoomed in section right in the middle in order to help you see and I'm gonna zoom in I'm gonna drag this outer box probably about that far so that the AI looks within this box and it sees other windows around the window in the middle and it doesn't get confused knowing that I'm only looking at the middle window then I'll take this inner box make sure that I get the window inside with a little bit of contrasted frame on the outside. So now After Effects is going to track that point in the middle from start to finish. So with my player head at the front, I'm gonna go all the way down to here and I'm gonna click on this arrow which says Analyze Forward. But let me zoom out so you guys get to see what happens while I click that. So let's go. As you can see, as it goes through, After Effects is tracking that point. It's going through frame by frame through the footage. If you give it a, a much larger box, it's gonna take a lot more time to go through the footage because it has a lot more of the footage to track. So the smaller the box, usually the quicker the tracking process takes. Boom, and that's it. So when it's done, you're gonna see a trail of points. You can zoom in here and you can see what has happened. I pull my player all the way to the left. You can see these are the points that Tracker has created as it goes through. And what you wanna do after you major track is just scan through and make sure that there is a smooth track that none of these points are jumping out of place that everything looks right sometimes you might find points where the tracker slips out and all you have to do is go to that very point where it jumps out let's say that this point is out of place all I do is I take that point and drag it back into place. Before I move on to the next step, let's say the point that you want to track is not available at the beginning of your footage, but is only available or comes into frame during the middle of your footage from this point, let's say. So there is an option to track forward and backwards. So just make sure that you track backwards if you need to, as well as forwards if you need to. All right, so once that's done, you need to create something called a null object. Basically what a null object is, it's a new layer that After Effects creates, which has nothing on it. And the point of a null layer is for you to throw any data, any information onto it, in order to use that data information on other layers that you might create in your project. So how we create a null layer is we come down to this section at the bottom, you right click and you say new null object. What that's gonna do, it's gonna create a layer called null. And if we click on it and hit enter, it's gonna rename this tracking point null so that we know what's happening. But now what we need to do is we need to put all of our tracking information onto that null object. So make sure our footage layer is selected and click this edit target button. This is where you wanna apply all the information to. 
If you want to apply to our now, we click OK. Don't forget to click Apply because it hasn't done anything just yet. I've done this many times before. Click Apply and then apply your dimensions X and Y and click OK. Now if we click on our null object, we see that all that information is in red. It has been copied over to our null object and it can't be seen. So that information is there for us to use at any other point in our project. Now what we can do is add some text. We can add some pictures. We could add anything that we want. What we're going to do is we're going to add some text and track that text. So let's go New Text and and now this allows us to type. So let's just keep it simple because that's where we are. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click P on my keyboard and position this, this text where I want it. Press S and that's going to bring up the scale. I'm going to drop the scale and kind of put it in between these two buildings. Click P again and reposition it. And that's fine there. All right, so now if we play through it, we have text in the middle, but it's not moving or doing anything. So we need to put that information from the null object onto the text layer. How you do that is you click this little twirly whirly inside of a polywag here. It's called a pick whip. Pick whip. Pick whip. Click the pick whip. Click the pick whip. And you drag to your null layer because you want to get that information and pick whip it into the text data. Something like that. Let go. Now what has happened is all that information is on your text and if we hit play and you have some nice motion tracked text. Okay, so that's single point tracking. What I want to show you now is two point tracking. So two point tracking is a little bit different. Two point tracking, you can get a little bit more detailed. So if you want to put text on the side of a building and this is a perfect example as we see as this camera moves around this building, it moves in 3D space and the plane on the side of the building changes. So we don't want to just have a piece of text that follows that building in one point. We want the text to actually move in 3D space and also grow in scale, grow in rotation. All right, so in order to do two point tracking, it's pretty much the same. You click on your video layer, you click on track motion, but what you want to do is you want to add the rotation and scale by clicking on those two buttons. And as you can see now, two points of track, two tracking points have been created. What we want to do is put the one on one side of the building and a point on the other side of the building in order to track that thing as it rotates and moves and scales around. So I'm going to see if this works, put it onto this window, give it a little space to work with. Hopefully it doesn't jump around too much. I'll do the same on this side. Again, you want to find an area of high contrast. So I'm going to track forward now by analyzing forward. And I'm just gonna watch that pretty closely. It did pretty well too on this one. So once the track is done, I scrub through it, just looking at my points. So now we have our tracking data. What we need to do is throw it onto a new null object. So we right click, click new, null object, and we're gonna call this one two points null. Click on our video, edit my target, make sure I choose the new null, two, say okay, and apply that, don't forget, X and Y axis. And if we click on our new null and scrub through it, all that information is tracked. Don't worry, both tracking points are all in that information, even though it only looks like one has been tracked. So we're gonna click on our text at the, at the top by either clicking this T at the top or right clicking at the bottom, new text. Let's just stick with original word. We're gonna make this a little bit smaller and stick it onto the side of the building. So I'm just scaling it down. Now I click on my text in this top layer and I click on the P button to position. Click on R, we can rotate it, match the rotation, because it's a little bit skewed. What you want to do is you also want to move this thing in 3D space. So how you do that is you click on your text layer and you click this little cube over there, 3D layer, and that converts it into a 3D layer. And now it allows you just to shift it in 3D space. But I want to pull it towards us. So you can click on these little ones. Oops, that just takes a little bit of getting used to. There we go. See, it's getting further away from us, closer to us. You can always pull on these red, blue, and green arrows. And I'm happy with that. Actually, I'm going to make this thing a bit smaller so that it fits inside the building there we go and now what we have to do is we need to make sure that we pick whip our pick whip take the little poly world's tummy and drag that thing onto your null object which contains all of our data like that and as you can see it's been parented you know that it works because it pops up there and now i'm going to drop the quality so we can see and i hit play and the word follows rotation scale almost looks like it's sticking to the side of the building and that is two point tracking last 
type of tracking that I want to show you is 3D camera tracking. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a new piece of footage. So I'm just going to drag this. I've already created a composition, so I'm just dragging this thing straight in. We have this chicky who's walking down an alley, kind of looking like some sort of catwalk model. And what we want to do is we want to put some images and some videos onto the sides of the walls because they look a bit boring and a bit plain. So we can do that with 3D camera tracking. Really easy. You click on your video, you go to the tracker. Instead of clicking track motion, what you're going to do is click track camera. Click on that and it is going to come up with the 3D camera tracker and it is basically going to go through your whole video and every single frame. It's going to take a little bit of time. So I'll fast forward this and see on the other side what you can do before you do that. Before you fast forward is click down click on advanced and click detail analysis. That's going to give you a bit more details to work with. So now I'll see you on the other side. Boom, it is done. What it has done, it has put a whole bunch of tracking points onto your footage. If you can't see any of these points or if they're too small, go over to the left here and you can drag these target side point size up in order for you to see. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put some on the left hand side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through it and find a point in our video where we want to add our... These things are huge, man. Drag these things down much better. So you want to find a point in the middle and I think this one matches the angle of my wall. I'm going to click in the middle then I'm going to right click and say create solid and camera. That's going to create a little green box and then I'm going to move on. I can create as many as I want. So I'm going to go a little bit further on, click here in the, in the middle of that triangle, right click and again I'm going to create another solid and then I'll just do one more. Why not? There, right click create solid and why don't we do one on this side and there we go click in the middle right click create solid so i'm not going to put them on all of them all right so i'm just going to hide these and we're going to work with let's work with that second one this red one and now if you want to put your video into that space what you're going to do is you're going to right click on your solid click pre-compose and then make sure that this top option is selected leave all attributes in and you can name it anything else you want and say okay and now we can double click on it because it's a new composition and I don't want this red box anymore I want to put my picture in there so I'm going to take one of these pictures of me we're going to put it on the wall but as you can see it's still in the wrong dimensions and my picture's too big and we can change that pretty easy by right clicking down here and going to composition settings this is the current size we want to change that so I'm going to change it to 1920 by 1080. Now I can click on my picture, hit S in order to scale down, scale out however I want, and that's fine. Now, if we go back, you can see our pictures on the wall, which is pretty cool. Now, what you can do is you can play with this thing in 3D space. So, if we click on our picture, we can now move this up. We can move it back in 3D space closer to the wall. I still think it's too big, so we can click on it, hit S on our keyboard, and scale it down. And we can move it up and we can rotate it. This one in order to match the angles. I still think it might be too big. We'll scale it down a bit more and drop it in. Kind of like it. So I'm going to just do this one on this side. Just to repeat the process, what you do is you right click, pre-compose, leave the top one selected, hit OK. Double click on it, add a new picture in. Let's do, oh that one's pretty good. We're going to delete our blue. We are going to change our composition. Right click, composition settings, 1920 by 1080 and scale this thing down. I don't know what I was doing. Now it's going to appear on the other side. Now we can play with our settings over here or you can click down here on this drop down and click on the transform drop down and you can change any of these settings as they are over here. Sometimes it's just easier to do with these little buttons which make a lot more sense. But I'm going to scale it down firstly, then I'm going to bring it up, rotate it so it kind of matches and then play through it. And these should look like that. But that's it guys, I hope that it helped you. If it did, give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, check out my other videos on the channel. I'd really, really appreciate it. And I hope that this just makes you a better filmmaker, a better editor um, in the process. So I'll see you guys around. Cheers.